Well, I didn't really have an early morning appointment, so I used to sleep long hours in the morning and get up, shower, and you know, and then hang out and just wait for beeper calls where people will call you that they're in need of uh, cocaine. So uh, a regular day would consist of just waiting on people to call and go to the places we used to have, you know, like stash the, pro the, the products. We either have one of my men go do it, bag it up, have it ready for delivery, and meet in different locations. Sometimes, uh, not necessarily in North, we would take it out of town, but we were not known to be, you know, drug traffickers. Well, the, the federal authorities were uh, investigating me and watching me for approximately 283 days, uh, wiretaps and, and surveillance. So I, I got arrested uh, on, on March 17th of 1986. That's when the feds, uh, the DEA, and the state police and the Newark Strike Force uh, put a plan together to bring me to justice. As a cocaine dealer, you come and uh, you, you bring your family into the, to risk. And the risk of being getting ripped off because people sometimes instead of trying to rob a bank they say if they hit a drug dealer they can make a lot more you hit a drug dealer for a kilo of cocaine and you can make two hundred thousand out of it or a hundred thousand you know in the street so we, we are risk for people that know that we have the product so it could cost you your life the risk of uh, also other people getting jealous of your prosperity in the street game of selling cocaine and ratting you out, so setting you up with law enforcement, and other people that, you know, that are against your profits that they're looking to take you out to, to kill you, to move you out of the spot because you're taking a lot of business. So the, the risks were high, the money was good, but, but the risk, the math of it is that you really had a risk all the time. Well, uh, at the time, I did. I did have a, a desire to to become a millionaire in, in the drug business, but at the same time, I always knew that the type of enemies that I had that it was just going to be temporary. So to live large for as long as I can, enjoy life. You know, I means party, spend money, you know, go out drinking, you know, meet other ladies, have sexual relationships. So. Uh, that was it's just at the time I just took it a day at a time and was uh, happily to have lived all that time. Yeah, there, there was moments of in, in, in my life that I used to think about the, the opportunity that those that wanted to kill me were about to take. So there was a, there's times also under the influence of, of cocaine that you get a little bit too paranoid become more dependable are the weapons that you have around you. So you would be like having guns everywhere, you know what I mean? And in the, in the kitchen drawer, on you, in the bathroom, you know, a shotgun in the, in, in, in the dirty clothes, linen, and, and always be, being on alert, you know, be, being prepared. So that there was moments of that, that paranoia would try to overtake us. And, and this is where I would try to, you know, have a couple of drinks, you know, a couple of blows of coke, you know, try to, to you know, to relax. Well, the, the Palasi Skyway uh, was a place that I thought about dumping the body uh, of a, another drug dealer that I had a, a problem with that I ended up taking his life. And I didn't want to drop his body in Newark because I knew that they had tried to accuse us of every uh, unsolved murder that was happening in the area. So by me taking the, the body out into Hudson County, it would take some of the heat from us. And, and, and it was a, it was a you know, tough thing to do, but the, the Palasi Skyway was one, one quick way to you know, throw the body off the, off the Skyway to, to, you know, to get rid of the body evidence. The, the hardest thing I had to do was take a life. You know, that, there was a situation where it was either my life or his life. You know, other people wanted to, for me to do some of their dirty work and, 
and take people out, but that, that wasn't my nature. That was something that I, I did not agree with, but uh, to, to take somebody's life was one of, one of the toughest things I did, something that I had to live with. A lot of drug dealers, you know, we unfortunately are telling ourselves we, we love to flash jewelry, we like to, to flash that, that we're prospering, and sometimes that is used against us. You know, jewelry, spend money, drive limousine, get the attention when you go to clubs, people surrounding you asking you for cocaine. And you know, back in those days I was working with a, with a big operation, an operation that was run by Manolo Vigoa, who later on was caught with uh, 705 kilos of cocaine. They first caught 100 kilos of cocaine at, at the New York airport that was coming through on the Colombian Airlines. So the people I, uh, I was working with was a, a multi-million dollar drug smuggling operation. These people were dedicating a lot of time to get these drugs in here. They also had a lab in Avenue P uh, in North New Jersey where they were cooking the cocaine from uh, making it, you know, to, from oil to you know, hydrochloride. So in Avenue P in North, they, they had this uh, lab where they were producing multi-kilo amounts. So uh, the people I was working with uh, at the time, Oreste Rodriguez, El Padrino, and, and the big boss in the background, Manolo Vigoa, who was connected with the, with the Colombian the cartel, or uh, it was a big opportunity to, that we all going to become millionaires. I was the type of I was the guy that put the street out, I put the cocaine out in the street for these people. I didn't really take the chance to carry the big loads and the burden of storing 50, 40, you know, kilos of cocaine. They, they, this responsibility was theirs. My thing was like a broker. I was to put the the cocaine in, in the people's hand in the streets, you know, North Newark, South Newark. <coughs> down neck, you know, wherever the demand was at. But they, this, this, these were a, a multi-million dollar operation. At, at the end, they, they got arrested with a, a total of uh, 805 kilos of cocaine, approximately street value, maybe $30 million. So they, it was a pretty, a pretty uh, big uh, network. But our uh, dream didn't come true. The feds had another plan. But we were looking at a retirement. They had a plan to keep us in prison for the rest of our lives. But thank God that I, I got the opportunity to, to return to society with a different heart.